To understand Bitcoin, we have to look at slime molds and the Tokyo subway network. Seriously. Scientists conducted an experiment where an ancient fungus, or slime mold, was incentivized to recreate the Tokyo subway system. Each subway stop, or node, was marked with the slime mold's favorite food, oat flakes. Mmm. After a short while, the slime mold grew to connect all the nodes slash stops in a more efficient design than the centrally planned committee of engineers hired by the Japanese government. When you think of the costs and complexities involved in such an infrastructure project, it's quite sobering to realize a slime mold can design a better network in a single day. Satoshi Nakamoto understood the power of the slime mold. Let me explain. Hey guys, I'm Drew. I turn the most important articles on Bitcoin and crypto into documentaries so more people can learn from them. This video was inspired by Bitcoin is the Mycelium of Money by Brandon Quittum. Subscribe if you want to support this mission. Bitcoin appears superficially simple upon first glance. However, truly understanding the system is a daunting task. Intellectual traps exist along the way, tricking observers into making hasty assumptions. I liken the pursuit of understanding Bitcoin to a mountain climber continually reaching false peaks that momentarily fool the climber into thinking they've reached the actual summit. As soon as you think you have Bitcoin figured out, you discover how little you actually know, or a false peak. Competing narratives make it even more challenging. Magic internet money, speculative mania, fintech revolution, Bitcoin boils the oceans, rat poison squared, libertarian idealism, digital gold, apex predator of monetary media, Gordian knot of interlocking incentives, etc. To make matters even more complicated, Bitcoin is a living system constantly changing based on environmental stimuli. True understanding is a moving target unlikely to ever be hit. Attempting to answer the question, what is Bitcoin? I found exploring parallels to the natural world to be particularly illuminating. In particular, some of Bitcoin's best characteristics are simply reflections of successful evolutionary strategies found in nature, specifically in the fungi kingdom. Fungi are predominantly made up of mycelium, an underground decentralized intelligence network described by Paul Stamets as Earth's natural internet. Fungi are in their own separate kingdom, just like plants and animals. There are more fungi species than plants and animals combined. Animals are more closely related to fungi than we are to plants. Both fungi and animals inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Plants produce their own food through photosynthesis, while animals and fungi must find their own food. Animals evolved to have internal stomachs slash brains, whereas fungi pursued external stomachs slash brains. Fungi can take many forms most organized in an underground root structure called mycelium that's found in nearly everywhere on this planet. When conditions are right, fungi produce mushrooms, which then release spores, or seeds, that attempt to colonize life in a nearby location. Mushrooms are simply the reproductive organ. Mushrooms are to the mycelium what apples are to a tree. Fungi are paramount to life on Earth. The largest organism on our planet is a fungal network. Fungi are the best chemists on our planet, much of our medicine comes from fungi. Trees cannot survive without underground fungal allies. Fungi have been around for 1.3 billion years, surviving all five great extinction events. Fungi are capable of saving the bees. Fungi are decentralized intelligence networks. Fungal networks don't have a centralized brain. Instead, they are a one cell walled root system called mycelium. This underground stomach and distributed intelligence network is capable of sending information bidirectionally over long distances and even across species lines. These fungal networks constantly evolve based on feedback from their environments. At any one point, a fungal network contains millions of endpoints, each searching for food, defending their territory, or inventing new molecules to subvert their composition, other fungi, bacteria, etc. These networks form a decentralized consensus on how to use resources, when to reproduce, and what strategy best defends the organism. Think about how crazy that is for a second. This mirrors the decentralized consensus, or social contract, formed in Bitcoin. Nodes determine what software they wish to run and enforce the consensus rules they support accordingly. Miners determine which transactions to include in blocks. Exchanges, wallets, and merchants each steward large groups of users. Each participant in Bitcoin voluntarily chooses how they wish to participate and the aggregate consensus represents the network. Decentralized networks have existed long before humans were around. In fact, fungi have been successfully implementing such systems for 1.3 billion years. 
making them the most successful kingdom on our planet. Besides fungi, there are several examples of distributed network archetypes found throughout nature. Mycelium, dark matter, neurons, the internet, etc. Clearly this strategy works, otherwise nature wouldn't insist on replicating it. When seen in the context of this long history of the decentralized network archetype, the advent of decentralized digital money seems less novel and more inevitable. The decentralized network archetype is Lindy. During a billion years of evolution, fungi have become masters of survival. Fungi are uniquely adaptive and continue surviving mass extinction events. 65 million years ago, a giant asteroid hit our planet, killing most life, including the dinosaurs on our planet. The impacts created a cloud of smoke so thick that it blocked sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface for many years. Without sunlight, plants died off and with them, most animals. Fungi, however, do not rely on sunlight to survive. They can adapt quickly and can find their own food. After each extinction event, fungi inherit the Earth and slowly rebuild until conditions stabilize and life can continue again. Bitcoin will become the most successful monetary species because it's decentralized, adapts relatively quickly, finds its own food in the form of unmet demand, and doesn't need government support. In the event of a mass monetary extinction event, Bitcoin will inherit the Earth. Whether it's central banks trying to steer the economy or hierarchical corporations trying to maximize value in the information age, central planning has many flaws. When making decisions in the information economy, decentralized or flat organizations are much more effective. They resist corruption, minimize bureaucracy, and push decision-making to the extremities where individuals or nodes have the most up-to-date information about the problem at hand. So this is why the slime mold can outperform the Japanese government. Bitcoin is a non-sovereign monetary good that pushes complexity and decision-making to the edge, just like fungi. Over time, this free market decentralization allows Bitcoin to outcompete various legacy financial systems who have little skin in the game, suffer from the innovator's dilemma, become more fragile over time, and often drown in bureaucracy, or worse. Mycelium has no central point of control. Any individual part can be removed, but the system as a whole survives. Bitcoin functions the same way. As any one developer, node, miner, exchange, or user may be vulnerable, yet not crucial for its survival. No one to jail, no one to shut down, no essential hardware to seize. Anytime one attacks Bitcoin slash mycelium, but doesn't successfully kill it, the system gets stronger. You come at the king, you best not miss. Nation states and central banks face a paradoxical challenge. If they attempt to destroy their competition, they'll highlight the very need for Bitcoin in the first place. And yet, the longer they wait, the stronger Bitcoin becomes. Both mycelium and Bitcoin endure in the most competitive ecosystems on our planet and must constantly adapt in order to survive. They have skin in the game and become hardened from hostility. Fungi are in a 24-7 competitive environment, constantly fighting little underground battles against various bacteria, microbes, and competing fungi. If one mycelial node senses a predator slash prey, it sends information to the mushroom scientists who then create a new enzyme to target the predator slash prey. The fungal network distributes this new enzyme where needed. Over time, the fungi develops a chemical library that acts both as a robust immune system and improves its ability as a predator, enabling greater ecological success. It's no wonder fungi can survive anywhere and continue to maintain dominance on our planet. Fungi are anti-fragile. Bitcoin responds to threats in a similar manner. As bugs slash threats slash opportunities are found in the system, information travels to the Bitcoin scientists or developers who create an enzyme or software patch. And this update propagates through the system. This enables greater ecological success for Bitcoin too. Bitcoin is anti-fragile. Both fungi and Bitcoin harden their defenses over time and learn to consume new food sources. This has a compounding effect increasing anti-fragility as well as life expectancy over time. In one extreme case, let's take a look at the largest organism on our planet, the honey mushroom. Found in the Blue Mountains in Eastern Oregon, this single organism is over 2.4 miles across. It's estimated to be between 1900 and 8600 years old and is currently consuming an entire forest. Fungi perform two ecological roles in this planet. They recycle all matter into base elements and act as our planet's immune system. Mycelia are the grand disassemblers of nature, Paul Stamets. 
Fungi spend their days quietly decomposing organic matter. They transform rocks, branches, leaf litter, dead animals, and oil spills into their base elements, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. Then fungi trade these valuable elements with nearby organisms. Fungi facts. Our forests would be buried in hundreds of feet of leaves and branches if fungi didn't decompose them and redistribute the nutrients. In other words, fungi unlock stranded resources. A tree cannot reuse its own leaves or branches as the carbon slash nitrogen slash phosphorus are locked in an unusable form. Fungi exploit arbitrage opportunities in their ecosystem. Bitcoin, through its proof-of-work mechanism, unlocks stranded resources in the form of energy. Before we tackle Bitcoin, let's explore a fascinating historical example. How aluminum was used to export stranded renewable energy from a country like Iceland. Iceland produces renewable geothermal energy, often in remote places. This leads to an excess supply that cannot reach the demand. Energy doesn't travel well over long distances. Iceland took advantage of their excess energy by producing aluminum, which is a very energy-intensive process. Iceland effectively turns excess energy into a durable store of value, aluminum, which can be exported. Bitcoin does the same thing. Instead of stranded energy dying on the vine, producers can mine Bitcoin or just sell excess energy to miners. This too enables excess energy production to be turned into a durable store of value. The second order effect is that Bitcoin is effectively subsidizing renewable energy projects. Fungi and Bitcoin are ecological immune systems. Fungi are the immune systems for both the ecosystems in which they live and the planet at large. Fungi produce medicinal compounds and protect their ecosystems through complex symbiotic relationships. Fungi broker resources underground via mycelium between species to ensure the health of the entire ecosystem. In crude terms, the fungi mine minerals underground for trees in exchange for sugars or food that the trees produce through photosynthesis. Trees get increased protection from invaders and crucial minerals which they cannot find on their own. Ever wonder why the baby oak tree can survive on a forest floor where it receives no sunlight? Each organism participating in this shared incentive system improves the evolutionary fitness of the forest. I believe forests are living superorganisms consisting of a variety of different species. Bitcoin performs a similar ecological role. Bitcoin is the internet's response to the fraud and corruption of the legacy financial system. Just a matter of time before the real disruption begins. The market sends signals for Bitcoin to create features that satisfy unmet demands or improve security as new threats emerge. Block space demand increases above capacity, so Lightning Network is born. China cracks down on exchanges. Localbitcoins.com flourishes. As Venezuela, Turkey, and Argentina hyperinflate their currency, Bitcoin steps in as a non-sovereign store of value. Blockstream launches satellites able to broadcast Bitcoin transactions to mitigate catastrophic events. You could even make the case that Bitcoin acts as humanity's immune system, helping fight off cancerous governments, rent-seeking businesses, central banks, debasement of the monetary supply, and even one of humanity's tragic faults, greed. Bitcoin also benefits from the aligned incentives between users, full nodes, miners, exchanges, and merchants. As Bitcoin better adapts to its environment, it better meets the demands of its growing constituents, which in turn recruits more network participants. This positive feedback loop promotes sustained growth of the network. Like the honey mushroom consuming entire forests in Oregon, Bitcoin is getting bigger and stronger over time. Hey guys, Drew again. This is my channel's first video ever, so subscribe if you want me to make more documentaries like this. And check out Brandon Quidham's other articles.